Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to Granny B's house. Is it a good day where you are? Oh, I hope so. Granny B's having a real good day. Are you remembering to be kind to those people around you? Oh, I hope that's the case. Granny B loves to hear stories about when people are being kind to each other. So next time I see you, maybe you can tell me a story about something you did that was very kind. I hope so too. <laughs> All right, I know it's not Valentine's Day, but I was in a used bookstore the other day and I found the cutest Valentine story. It's called The Littlest Valentine, and it's about a family whose name is Valentine. So that makes their life a lot of fun, I'm sure. The Littlest Valentine was written by Brandy Doherty and illustrated by Michelle Lisa Todd. Emma Valentine. Oop, let me get out of the way here. Emma Valentine was a girl. She lived with her family in a big city. There were many people in Emma's family, but she was the littlest one. It was almost Valentine's Day, and Emma was excited. After all, her family's name was Valentine. Valentine's Day was their favorite holiday. The Valentines owned a gift shop where people bought their Valentine's Day gifts and treats. And this year, Emma would join the family business. She couldn't wait to help. Granny B apologizes. I seem to be yawning here while I'm reading this book and it's such a sweet book. I'm sorry I yawned when I said that. Let's get back to the story. Emma joined her brother Elliot with the heart-shaped balloons, but there wasn't enough air in her little lungs to fill a balloon. Emma, are you okay? Elliot asked. You don't look so good. I'm fine, Emma wheezed. I think you're too little to help with the balloons, Elliot replied. Try making cards instead. Emma's parents were in their workshop making Valentine's Day cards. I'd like to make a card, Emma whispered. She picked up a small scrap of pink paper and got to work. How's this, she asked, holding up her creation. Well, that's very cute, sweetheart, Mama's Emma's mama said, but I'm afraid it's kind of small. Want to try again, her dad asked, or you could help Nana and Poppy. Emma decided to go see her grandparents in the kitchen. Hello, Emma, Poppy boomed when she arrived, here to make some chocolates. Yes, I am, Emma smiled. She had a good feeling about chocolate making. Oh. <gasps> Nana showed Emma how to squeeze chocolate onto a tray. Emma squeezed, but nothing happened. She squeezed harder. The tiniest drop of chocolate oozed out. Poppy handed Emma a truffle. You should try balloons, he offered. I already did, Emma sighed. Emma stomped outside. She was sad and a bit grumpy. Emma knew there had to be one Valentine job she could do, even if she was little. Then Emma heard a noise. There on the other side of the fence was a puppy. He looked sad and a bit grumpy. And he was little, just like Emma. Emma approached the fence, but the puppy backed away. He was muddy and wet, and he didn't have a collar. It's okay, Emma said gently. Emma ran inside and came back with a small bowl of food. The puppy came right over. He was hungry. She opened the gate. The puppy walked to the bowl to eat. Emma smiled. Nana and Poppy came out to see what was keeping Emma so busy. 
Can we keep him? Emma asked her grandparents. Maybe, said Nana. Let's call the animal shelter first and make sure no one is looking for him. Emma led the puppy into the house. She ran a warm bath with extra bubbles while Nana called the animal shelter. Emma scrubbed and scrubbed. Soon he was shiny and clean. Nana came in. Looks like this puppy needs a home, Emma smiled. Your name is Eek, she told the puppy, and you live here now. Eek wagged his tail happily. Emma found a thick red ribbon with hearts on it to tie around Eek's neck. The ribbon reminded her that it was almost Valentine's Day. Then she had an idea. Come on, Eek, we've got work to do. Emma went into the kitchen and asked Nana and Poppy for help. They set to work making heart-shaped dog treats. Eek was the taste tester. Before long, the whole Valentine family was gathered in the kitchen, filling bags of treats for their gift shop. Emma's dad set up a stand in the corner of the shop and for Emma and Eek to sell their treats. The treats were a huge hit with the customers, especially the furry ones. What a wonderful idea, Emma's mom said. What made you think of it? Everybody needs a little love on Valentine's Day, Emma replied. Emma had found her special Valentine job after all, but more than that, she had also found a special friend. Oh, what a wonderful story. That just makes my heart happy that that little puppy found a good home and Emma found a job to do. So I hope you have a job to do, even if it's something simple like picking up your toys or making your bed or keeping your room clean. We all need jobs to do. You know, it gives you a sense of satisfaction to know you've done a job well. Plus, it's good training for later when you have to go to work at places. So even though it's not Valentine's Day, I hope you find love today and I hope you find work to do, even if it's simple work. It's good for you to work. And you know what? Granny B doesn't think this is work at all reading to you. And I don't think it's work at all going into the schools to talk to my friends about being kind. So you just remember that Granny B loves you and I want you to come back real soon so I can read you another story, okay? Bye-bye.